Hi everybody. We're here to talk about Cylon JS and next generation JavaScript robotics. So good afternoon. This is Maker Fair. If uh, you're not supposed to be at Maker Fair, get out now. Still time. I am Dead Program. In the real world, my name is Ron, but I am Dead Program, ringleader of Hybrid Group. This guy over here is A.D. Zankic, Adrian Zankic. He's the serious programming guy at Hybrid Group. So that means he does all the work and I take all the credit, which is nice. So we're, we're with the Hybrid Group. We're a software company based in Los Angeles, California, home of the Flying Space Robots. If you're a fan of either the Jet Propulsion Laboratory or SpaceX, you know I'm not making this up. And uh, we're also the creators of Kids Ruby which uh, won the Fukuoka Ruby Awards a uh, year before last. It gets about a terabyte of downloads a, a month. It's uh, free and open source for teaching kids programming. However, today we're here to talk about JavaScript robotics. Z no, not Maria. That's a talk about the uh, robotic proletarian revolution. Uh, we don't have time for that. All right, so uh, let's get into it. The future is already here. It's just not very evenly distributed. At least that's what the futurist and author William Gibson said. And that's really true, especially if you're looking around Maker Faire, you realize that you can actually just go out to retail stores and order online all sorts of drones and robotic devices and physical computing systems. The problem is, however, that it's been way too hard to take these off-the-shelf products and actually integrate them together into something that does anything at all useful. And that's the reason why we created Cylon JS. It's a JavaScript-based, open source, robotics, and physical computing platform that runs on top of Node.js. So it's very, very fast, and it's relatively easy to use. It's a, you might think of it trying to make, uh, well, it supports, obviously, multiple hardware devices. We support 19 different platforms right now. It supports different hardware devices, and it supports multiple different hardware devices at the same time, as you will see at the very end of this talk. So we're trying to make physical computing and robotics development as easy as it is to do web development today. So if your web developer is going easy, no, it actually is easy compared to how it was back in the bad old days. So without further ado, it has a built-in API because you need an API to program your robots across the internets if you want to do anything interesting. Test-driven robotics. You should be testing your robotics and physical computing platforms before you deploy them out in the real world. Just ask Toyota about their brake systems or maybe GM about their ignition systems. If you work for either Toyota or GM, I'm really sorry. We have a command line interface since the CLI is the new API. In fact, we split that out into its own whole own separate project called Gort. You can check that out at gort.io. We also are promoting something called RobotOps, which is DevOps for Robotics. And that's a separate project as well. You can check that out at robotops.com. But we don't have time for all that today. Show me a demo. All right. So, of course, everything here starts with an Arduino. Everyone here knows what an Arduino is. So we support the Arduino as one of the 19 different platforms. And what we're going to do right now is Adrian here is going to use his computer. Yes, he's going to use his computer, which plugged in via this cable. It's using a sketch that's already on the Arduino called Fermata, which is a generic serial protocol that you can talk to different microcontrollers with and then use your computer as the brains while making the microcontroller do all the hard work. So very quickly, we don't, we don't even, let's just look at the code real fast. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was it. So here's a very, very simple Cylon JS program. First, we say var Cylon equals require Cylon. In Node.js, that brings in the required code that we need from Cylon JS. Then we say Cylon.robot, and we have a connection. Connections are very much to devices like object relational mappers are to databases. It lets us use the same code and switch between different platforms. And then we have a device. The name is the LED and it uses the LED driver. And then the work that we're going to do is every one second, 
we're going to mine.led.toggle, which is going to cause the LED to blink. Then last but not least, we say dot start. So Adrian's going to run his code here. And if the demo gods favor us, yes, a $2,500 lamp. Woo. Applause. Gratuitous applause. All right, so let's get into some other cool stuff. How about the TESOL? Who here has ever heard of the TESOL? So the TESOL is a new JavaScript-powered microcontroller. You probably haven't seen them because they haven't shipped yet. But uh, they're from a great company called Technical Machine. So if we take a look at the code, you'll see it looks almost exactly like the code we used on the Arduino. The only difference being that the connection is going to be using the TESOL adapter. That way, otherwise, it's still the LED device on a different pin. And then the work that we're going to do Exact same work. So it's pretty much exactly the same code, however, using the Tesla microcontroller. So this is the Tesla right here, plugged into the exact same circuit, exact same breadboard. So we're going to run the code. We should download it. Now the difference here is, whereas with the Arduino, the computer was doing all of the hard work and the Arduino was just responding, in this case, the code is actually running on the microcontroller itself. So it's a fully JavaScript powered microcontroller. The only reason we're plugged into it is so that we have power. If we were plugged into a battery, then we wouldn't need that. So yes, same code, blinking. Tesla blink. Woo. All right. The Beetlebone Black. The Beetlebone Black is a fantastic single board Linux computer. Uh, a lot of different projects are powered by it. The uh, OpenROV project is powered by it. Lots of other things. It's a single board Linux computer powered by an ARM microprocessor. It is its own separate computer. It does all the work. We're actually going to run Cylon.js on it in similar fashion to the way we did the Tesla. But it's a full Linux computer, so we can do all of the wonderful things that you can do in Linux. So here's the code. It looks almost exactly like the code you saw with the Tesla. The difference here is that the connection is using the BeagleBone adapter. Same device. This time it's plugged into pin P9 underscore 12 which is exactly the way it's labeled on the BeagleBone Black, and the exact same work. So here is the Arduino code. Here is the Tesla code. Here is the BeagleBone Black code. So it pretty much looks exactly the same. So let's cut to the video. And so uh, Adrian's SSH in. And yes, BeagleBone Black blink. I can barely say that. Applause. All right, so let's keep going. Time is short, but lots, little to do and lots of time. Wait, strike that, reverse it. So now it's a quick choose your own hardware adventure. Uh, we work with a lot of these companies and they've done lots of great things for us. So uh, you actually get to possibly win one of these wonderful devices. All you have to do is pull out your mobile device to win a Spark Core which is another microcontroller that we have support for. Just tweet Spark Devices and Cylon.js. To win a Pebble smartwatch, just tweet Pebble and Cylon.js. Or to win a Sphero, just tweet Go Sphero and Cylon.js. So getting back to that one more time. To win a Spark, tweet Spark Devices and Cylon.js. To win a Pebble, Pebble and Cylon.js. Or to win a Sphero, tweet Go Sphero and Cylon.js. You can tweet as many times as you want. We're going to choose through arbitrary and random techniques, and we will notify you via the Twitterverse if you are one of the winners. All right, on with the show. So now we're going to show a demonstration that shows a pebble controlling an AR drone that uses OpenCV to do facial recognition, which will then turn on the Spheros and will also be running a DigiSpark microcontroller, which is connected inside the AR drone itself featuring two other platforms that are basically the same exact concept as Cylon.js, R2, which is Ruby on robots, and GoBot, which is the Go programming language. So you might think of this as the mother, father, and child of all demos. All right, so the first part, R2. So R2, we're going to connect to the Pebble watch. So we're going to start this all out by pushing a button on our Pebble. That way he can actually walk away from the computer. Here's the code for that. It's some Ruby code and it basically just connects to the pebble and we're, when the button is pushed we're going to use the API to tell Cylon to do this the next thing. Alright? 
So then the Cylon code is running, connected from his computer, communicating with the AR drone. In this case, we're going to be doing some facial recognition. Uh, we've got the AR drone and OpenCV. OpenCV is a computer vision platform. Uh, it's open source as well. It does a lot of wonderful things. And uh, when the facial recognition is triggered, we're then going to have Cylon communicate with GoBot. GoBot is our Go language support framework, which is exactly the same concepts as Cylon and R2. In this case, what it's going to do is communicate with the DigiSpark microcontroller, which is actually plugged into the drone itself. You might be able to see there's a breadboard taped to the top uh, with our same circuit that we used before, same LED. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to have R2 tell the Cylons to command GoBot. All right. And then, uh, of course, we're going to, because uh, the LED is a little small, we're going to command these Sphero robots to blink around crazily. So that LED is going to flash when the facial neck recognition works, and then the Spheros will be crashing around and flashing at the same time. Through this little bit of code that we don't have too much time to go over. Because, you know, 15 minutes of fame is really, really short. All right, so. So we should uh, plug your, uh, you want to just plug your, Sure. This way we can actually see the uh, computer vision when it kicks on. Adrian here is not only a serious programming guy, but he's also our test subject slash target slash volunteer. Sure. So then when I take this off, you can full screen that. Alright. So. Alright. Alright, let's do this. Three, two, one, contact! So when is showing up? Is the one showing up on that? Uh, the demo gods. No. Here. Let's, let's do a quick look here. This is how you know it's real. Want to take off right from there? Yeah, maybe. maybe yeah, just, maybe. Just, That felt good. Yeah. We've all been bit by drones. Sometimes you got to pay a little flesh for robotic excellence. Unfortunately, we're not amateurs like the last demo, which went perfectly. We're professionals. That means things go wrong. All right. Disconnected. Standing by, Houston. Still standing by. Standing by. Uh, Houston, we may have a problem. I just like saying that. It worked perfectly in our hotel room. There's a lot of hotels we could never stay in again, like all of them. It's amazing the kind of flying that you can do in a suite, or even in a small, small room with one bed. Yeah. All right, this is our last shot. Will it happen? But it was going so well. Okay, almost there. Stay on target. Third time's the charm. Oh, 
Engage. There we go. I, I got to move that. You gotta go into the other screen. You gotta... The video is frozen on this thing right now. It looks like you're trying to run away from it. Maybe that has something to do with it. No, it's the. There's so much Wi Fi static in here that it's. Okay, everybody turn off your Wi Fi devices in the whole place. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. All right, well, I think that was uh, all the time we've got. But he's not giving up. Yeah, I think we're... That might be all she wrote. Now it'll work perfectly. Yeah. Now that the camera's off, it was kind of shy. It's not going to work. All right, well, was that fun, watching us squirm? So uh, we want you to join the robot evolution. That's why we've created all these open source platforms. So CylonJS.com if you want to program physical devices in JavaScript. R2.io if you prefer Ruby on robots. And Gobot.io if you want to investigate the new and highly powerful Go programming language. So thank you very much.